U.S. investigators now believe that the missing Malaysia Airlines jet stayed in the air for four additional hours after civilian radar contact was lost. The journal is citing sources as saying that Flight 370 likely stayed airborne for five hours, according to data sent to the ground from the aircraft's Rolls-Royce engines. I'm Jeffrey Ng for The Wall Street Journal. I'm joined now by Professor Jason Middleton, head of the School of Aviation at the University of New South Wales. Professor Middleton, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, with the latest information that we're hearing uh, out of the U.S., uh, is it possible that an aircraft transponders that either have been switched off or have been malfunctioning, uh, other systems could continue to send data back to the airline and to the manufacturers? Yes, the ACARS system uh, sends packets of data at regular times uh, back to base uh, back to, and back to the uh, aircraft manufacturers, the engine, engine uh, owners, so to speak. Uh, to provide ongoing information. That's done automatically and needs no pilot intervention. But uh, with data still being sent for four hours after the contact was lost, could it mean that the engines were still operating or could there be other malfunctions that make this data seem unreliable? Well, if the pilots were unconscious, uh, for whatever reason, they they'd run out of oxygen and so on, and the autopilot was still working, then the airplane would simply fly on in the same direction until it ran out of fuel. So that's one hypothesis of how that might occur. Um, the question, though, is that with the aircraft's transponder, radar transponder turned on, when it crossed an area where there were radars, then that would have shown up on the radar's receivers. I guess that doesn't quite explain why the transponders had stopped sending signals uh, at that particular moment. You know, there are some theories that this was deliberate, other theories that there was, uh, you know, a catastrophic uh, break of the aircraft in the air. Uh, what, what's your, your assessment of the, this transponder issue just not, uh, no longer transmitting? What could, what could have caused it? Well, in line with the fact that there's no communications uh, as well with, with the pilots, uh, that suggests if the airplane is still flying that there was a fairly significant malfunction of the entire uh, communication system and probably disablement of the pilots as well. Uh, so you, you can think of, of ways that might happen. Um, each of them is unlikely, but then, of course, every scenario we're thinking of at the moment is unlikely. That definitely. But so I guess with this latest story, the, uh, the search parameters may, may be much farther than what uh, the uh, uh, Malaysian and other authorities are looking for this jet. But in your, in your assessment of the very limited data that we are provided at this time, uh, what other scenarios or what are the more compelling scenarios that, that you see as an expert in, in, in aviation to be possible causes or, uh, uh, what's, or what's, what has brought this plane or made it disappear or, uh, for so long? Well, you, you've really got two choices. It's some sort of catastrophic malfunction uh, in which there is no sort of illegal activity played a part, just uh, systems failing and failing terribly badly uh, in, in a peculiar set of circumstances, or there's some sort of illegal intervention that be, could be someone on board or could be, uh, 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 for example, explosives that packed in the cargo, which again cause such a, a, uh, a, a serious set of malfunctions that the aeroplane and the pilots are incapacitated. So whether it was human caused or otherwise, certainly it must have been uh, some very serious malfunctions. To have the aeroplane flying is really, really curious as well because anything that would seriously cause those malfunctions probably would uh, affect the autopilot as well and the aeroplane would crash into the ocean. Now, Professor, I'd like to go back to the question on ACARS, the autom automated uh, uh, systeming messaging system that the aircraft has with the ground and with the uh, manufacturer and the airline. Uh, would that data have any sort of uh, information on the aircraft's location or would it usually be specific to the certain parameters uh, that's relevant, such as engine data or uh, speed or whatnot? Would, would, would these packets of data contain uh, lo location or geographic spe specific information? Now, the, uh, that, uh, the ACARS data doesn't normally contain uh, specific location information. Um, it, it, uh, well, the, look, the, the Rolls-Royce people, the engine people, only want to know 
how their engine uh, time series are trending. Uh, that's all they need. Um, the company, on the other hand, uses ACARS to upload and download um, uh, information in packets so the pilots can request extra weather, for example, uh, or the company can upload weather or conditions at the change conditions at the destination. That's what ACARS is normally used for. And the engine engine monitoring is a in a sense a separate system. Now I'm not sure on this aeroplane whether that's the same set of packet data or a different set. And it may be a different set sent by the um, uh, by the Rolls Royce engine. All right, definitely we'll have to keep an eye, a close eye on this. Uh, Professor Jason Middleton from the University of New South Wales, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm Jeffrey Yang for the Wall Street Journal.